Hello, everyone, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church on this Ash Wednesday. If you would like to receive ashes today, Pastor Nelson and myself will be available in the sanctuary to give them privately to individuals or families that would like them. We will, of course, be using gloves and masks and hand sanitizer, um, but you are welcome to come anytime between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to receive those privately in the sanctuary. We will also be giving them in our drive-in service this evening, which is at 6.30. May our worship today be glorifying to God and a blessing to you. Amen. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God created us to experience joy in communion with him, to love all humanity, and to live in harmony with all of his creation. But sin separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation and so we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended for us. Also, by our sin, we grieve our Father, who does not desire us to come under His judgment, but to turn to Him and live. As disciples of the Lord Jesus, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from love of God and of neighbor. Repentance, fasting, prayer, and works of love, the discipline of Lent, Help us to wage our spiritual warfare. I invite you, therefore, to commit yourselves to this struggle and confess your sins, asking our Father for strength to persevere in your Lenten discipline. We now pause for a moment of reflection on our sins and the forgiveness we're promised in Jesus. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. God. Be merciful to me, a sinner. We have been deaf to hear your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. All our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives, we confess to you, O Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you, O Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, we confess to you, O Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work, we confess to you, O Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, we confess to you, O Lord. For the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, accept our repentance, O Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us, accept our repentance, O Lord for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, O Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us ask our Father to bless these ashes which we will use as the mark of our repentance. Lord, bless these ashes by which we show that we are dust. Pardon our sins and keep us faithful to the disciplines of Lent, for you do not want sinners to die, but to live with the risen Christ. Almighty God, from the dust of the earth you have created us. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence and a reminder that only by your gracious gift are we given eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return.
a reflective reading from Psalm chapter 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations, before the mountains were born, where you brought forth the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Amen. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Amen. A reading from Joel chapter 2, verses 12 through 19. Yet even now, declares the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent, and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room, and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text for this Ash Wednesday service is taken from Joel chapter 2, with emphasis upon these words. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. My favorite picture, perhaps all... Perhaps my all-time favorite picture is this one on the screen. This is a picture of a return, of a return of my son Victor, a soldier who was in Iraq. Now he's returning to his wife and his little baby girl, Gracie. <laughs> I love the picture because Gracie looks up at him and says, Who is that big guy? <laughs> Uh, now she knows who he is. But what a joyful return that was for all of us. And uh, it's just a uh, return is just a great thing. And we see in the Bible many great returns. As a matter of fact, some key stories or some key events of the Bible deal with returns. We see the people of Israel, for 400 years, enslaved in Egypt. And finally, they get to return to the Holy Land. And what a great thing it was. We see some uh, generations later, maybe 40 generations later, the people of Israel being carried away into exile to Babylon. Therefore, 70 years again of slavery. And then they get to return again. What a glorious return to the Holy Land. As we look in the New Testament, perhaps the favorite parable that Jesus told is a parable of return. 
It's the parable of the prodigal son returning to his waiting and loving father. And of course, the major theme of the whole Bible is Jesus dying for our sins, but yet returning to life again. And our response to that resurrection of Jesus is to return to God ourselves. And this is what Joel invites all of us to do. Our lesson for today is about returning. Return to the Lord your God. Well, let's look at the background. A Joel may have been written some 2,900 years ago, and there was a major problem. And he describes it as armies of locusts destroying the land. And here's how he expresses it in chapter 1, verse 4. He says, What the co cutting locusts left, the swarming locusts has eaten. And what the swarming locusts left, the hopping locusts has eaten. And what the hopping locusts left, the destroying locusts has eaten. Eaten. And so it's a total destruction, a total wipeout of the land. Now, some feel that this was figurative language, and it's describing a mighty army that came and destroyed the land. But others say, no, it's literally, it's, it's locusts that have come and, and destroyed uh, the food crop. But e either way, it was catastrophic. Either way, it was a great calamity left with hunger and starvation and uh, great difficulty. Lives were in the balance. People had walked away from God. And Joel says that this is the result. Calamity and catastrophe from walking away from God. And I imagine all of us could look at our lives and examine time periods when we walked away from God. And there probably were some pretty significant events, maybe not so good, that had happened while we were away from God. And that's what happens when we're away. We are more prone to having calamitous events based upon bad judgments as we are away from the Lord. And so, who's invited to return to the Lord? Uh, look at, at this uh, verse here. Gather the people. Consecrate the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and let the bride her chamber. Well, look at the folks who are invited to return. It's all the people. It's the congregation. It's the older folks. It's the children. It's the infants. It's even people who've got very important things, like you get married. No. Return to the Lord first. All of the people are invited and encouraged to return to the Lord. And when? Now. Yet even now. It's, it's like God is declaring, you, you, you walk down a far path away, so far away, with little interest in me. But now, even now, you can come back. Return to me with your whole heart. God is pleading to his people right now. And what do we mean by, by return? Well, he he says that phrase, with all your heart. Return to the Lord you know, with, with your heart. You see, it's not a matter of a physical return. People have maybe been in church all their life, but they still strayed from the Lord with their heart. It's a heartfelt return. And uh, that's so important. St. Augustine talks about disordered loves. We love things more than we love God. That's a disordered love. And the, those things could be 
wonderful things, whether it be a family, whether it be a job, whether it be an education, whether it be possessions or money, things that are, that are good things, but they're disordered. They're, they're, um, they're not properly um, thought about. And so those things take priority over God. And so God says, return with all your heart. In Revelation, Jesus pleads for a congregation, uh, the, the Ephesians, to return to him. He says to them, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. You see, they, they have a disordered love. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. You know, Jesus says, return to me. Right. Get that love straightened out. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And how do we return? Our next verse tells us, again, with all your heart, outwardly, fasting, weeping, and with mourning, but again, inwardly is what it counts. Rend your hearts and not your garments. doesn't matter so much what you do outwardly, but inwardly, your heart, uh, you return with sincerity of heart, repenting of sin, weeping and, and grieving over placing other things first in your life before God. And why should we return? We sing this during the season of, of Lent, typically in our worship service. I don't know if we're going to sing it this Lent. But we return to the Lord, your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. And we see this verse coming to its culmination in the death of our Savior Jesus. We see in Jesus how gracious and merciful God is, that God would give his only Son to forgive us. His love was so great for us that Jesus willingly went to the cross so that we could be restored. We can return to the Lord cleansed and forgiven. When we have a disordered love, we're always forgetting about the love of Jesus, the love of Jesus in which he gave his life for us. When we really remember what happened there on the cross, what Jesus did for us, his grace and his mercy, his steadfast love, his returning away from our disaster so that we could have life, when we remember what he did, then our hearts are certainly drawn to him. And then we're ready to return with a full heart, a heart that loves the Lord. Ashes can be a symbol of return, most certainly. Now, typically, ashes symbolize two things. First, they're a sign of repentance and returning to the Lord is, is repentance. It's turning away from sin, sin, turning back to God. And each one of us can turn to the Lord. And then, secondly, ashes are a sign of our mortality. Right? But they're given in the shape of the cross, a reminder that even though we die, yet in Christ we're forgiven and we live. As Jesus rose, we also will rise again. And that's a reminder of our return. Even when we die, we return to the Lord. And we experience that grace in his time, in his day, of the resurrection. So Joel pleaded with his people, Return to the Lord your God. And the Holy Spirit for each one of us, pleads. Look at, look at your life. Look at the places you need to repent. The Lord is ready to forgive. He's abounding in grace and mercy and steadfast love. The Holy Spirit 
calls each one of us, calls you, return to the Lord your God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that this holy season of Lent may be a, a season of turning and returning again to you, turning for your forgiveness, for your mercy, returning to your love, and turning, O oh Lord, to walk in the ways you would desire for us. Help us, O oh Lord, each day to return to you. In the holy name of Jesus, our Savior, who made it all possible. Amen. By grace I'm saved, grace free and boundless. My soul believe and doubt it not. Why stagger at this word of promise? As scripture We now join in confessing our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you have not already done so this week, I would like to encourage you to reflect upon your tithes and offerings to the Lord. If you would like to mail in your tithes or offerings, you may do so to the mailing address that is on the screen. If you would like to give your tithes or offerings online, you may do so on our website. Simply go to the website rlc.life and click the Give Online button. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.